Here we are, another 15 empties. Just before they get recycled, we're going to give them a bit of a score and decide whether I would replace them or not. Just the same as last time. But a bit of an extra for this video, that is there's going to be a giveaway. Nine of these bottles still had some heels left in the bottom, so I'm going to do a bit of a giveaway and there'll be details of how you can win nine of these sample bottles from these whiskies that are being thrown away just now. Details at the end of the video. Just before we get started, don't just listen to my opinion on these bottles. In the description box below, you're going to find links to other reviewers out there so you can understand their opinion as well. What you'll also find is a link to a spreadsheet that's got a list of all my scores from all the recycled videos that I've done up to now. And that'll include a link that you can click on that'll take you directly to the point in the video where I speak about that specific expression. Let's get started. <laughs> Kalila, 12 year old. This is Kalila's standard 12 year old expression. Fantastic whiskey, really always decent value, always available everywhere. And I think the word is finally out there now about Kalila 12 year old. It's just such a nice Isla Petite whiskey to be getting on with now. And a lot of people say that the peat is less than its south coast Isla siblings like Ardbeg, Lagavulin and Laphroaig. And that's probably true, but this is still a very peaty prospect. I will always have Kalila 12 in the house. I've got more inside already. It's fantastic whiskey, eight and a half out of 10, and just great for any whiskey collection. Great stuff. This is a closed distillery. This is Little Mill. This is an independent bottling of a Little Mill from 2010. This was bottled. This is a 1991 Little Mill. Some of the last whiskey that they produced, actually, it was closed in 1992. This was nice whiskey, even very nice whiskey. Maybe not what you would expect given its age. I mean, when this was bottled, it was already 19 years old, but I had this a long time. I opened this in 2010. It was a gift from my brother and I only just finished the last drop of it just a week or so ago. And it was still very bright and fresh after all that time, despite never being gassed. Now, of course, it would have changed over that time, but not so much that I felt I'd lost anything. If you're curious about gassing whiskey, check out the Scotch Test Dummies. On their channel, they've got a video where they do an experiment a year apart where they gas whiskey and compare it to the exact same expressions that are ungassed. Quite interesting stuff. This little mill was decent. And while it wasn't fabulous whiskey, you always get the sense when you're drinking a whiskey like this that it's not just a dram you're having, you're actually getting to participate a little bit in some form of history. Little Mill was destroyed and it's never going to be seen again. Like any closed distillery, these are starting to get quite expensive to pick up now, and it's tough, I think, sometimes for the whiskey, you know, to live up to the price that you'd have to pay to get it. But still, Little Mill is one of the more available closed distilleries, and if you see it out there, it's worth trying. This one, seven and a half out of 10. This is Highland Park 18 year old. Now this is very curious for me because in my whiskey journey, Highland Park 18 used to be up there. It used to be one of my all time favorite whiskies and it would be gifted to me for special occasions over the years. But as time went on, I felt like the whiskey got poorer. But I don't know if that's actually true. I don't know if it's the whiskey or if it's just me that's moved on a little bit. Honestly, this bottle lasted far, far too long in my cabinet. I just wasn't enjoying it. And it wasn't probably until the last third that I felt like it was actually engaging at all. I once put this up against some fairly mediocre competition in a blind challenge as well, and it really underperformed. I was really surprised. However, it's still decent whiskey, even although it's getting more and more expensive all the time. And there's so many people out there that absolutely love this whiskey, and I can understand why. Still, I would only give this seven and a half out of 10, and I'm not in a hurry to replace this HP 18. This was a treat. This is a 2016 Spirit of Speyside special bottling from Glen Farkless, a 1989 bottled at 26 years old, fantastic Oloroso Sherry cask expression. Wonderful stuff at cask strength, 56.3% as well. I was sad when the last drop of this went. However, it is included in the giveaway that you can find out more about at the end of this video. This was wonderful whiskey. It's gonna be very difficult to replace this again, but really a fantastic example of a cask strength Oloroso Sherry cask experience. This is a 9 out of 10 whiskey and it probably deserves another half point more than that as well considering that this cast strength 26 year old Glen Farkless single malt was only £120 at the festival. Fantastic value. <laughs> ok 
Okay, what I've got here is less to do with individual whiskies, more to do with a concept. These are both hand fill bottles. This one, I only had about a third of the bottle when it was gifted to me from Whiskey Rover. Thank you very, very much. This was about, I think it was about five years old when it was bottled at Deanston, a hand fill Deanston. And this Bal Blair was a 19 year old, 1997. I picked this up in 2016 when I was at Bal Blair. And this is when you can kind of hand fill your own bottle and take it home with you. A great concept. Can be a bit expensive at some distilleries sometimes. This wasn't too bad. 19 year old whiskey, I think it was 80 or 90 pounds at the time. And I'm not sure how much Jason paid for this. Completely different whiskies. This whiskey for me was a whiskey that taught me how to start enjoying honey and whiskey. I don't really enjoy the flavour of honey generally and it was always something if a whiskey was overly honeyed, I struggled with it. However, this was gorgeously honeyed. This was kind of a honeycomb almost thing going on. And there was that really, really nice, heavy, oily texture as well. This was fantastic whiskey. This on the other hand was young, very, very bright and fresh and bold. This was closer to new make, I would say. But lots of other flavours going on in there as well. And this is finished in a craft ale cask, an American craft ale cask. Now, for me, there wasn't a lot of the craft ale thing going on. I would never have picked it out blind, but it did add enough flavour and engagement to make this really quite nice. And it was a fantastic example how I believe just now, Deanston seems to take on the best of any cask it's put in. This was great whiskey and I thoroughly enjoyed finishing this off. But I guess generally, if you get the chance to go to a distillery, this is a great thing to pick up. Look at what they've got on offer for the hand-filled casks and take that stuff home with you. You're not gonna be able to buy it anywhere else. This one, I'd give seven and a half out of 10. This one is a solid nine out of 10. Hazelburn from Springbank down in Campbelltown. Now, it's often said that Hazelburn is overlooked, and it's probably true. It's probably the least celebrated of the three brands that comes out of Springbank Distillery. There's Hazelburn, Springbank, and Longrow. This, however, was a fantastic whiskey. Not typical of Hazelburn's style, though. Um, I would say that this is kind of, despite it being triple distilled, I don't think there was any kind of triple distilled character in there at all. It was very, very bright. This was Oloroso cask matured 13 years exclusively in an Oloroso cask and bottled at 47.4%. Great stuff. Lots of spice, lots of chocolate, lots of, lots of cooked fruits, lots of kind of nuttiness and a nice, nice texture to finish it off as well. Took water very, very well too. I would give this a decent 8.5 out of 10. However, I'm not sure I would replace it. I think I've had my time with this, and if I'm going to replace this bottle, I would just buy a standard Hazelburn or maybe something else in the range that's not all or also mature to understand the distillate of Hazelburn a wee bit more. Still, fantastic stuff. Another Springbank. This is the 15 year old. Cracking whiskey, really cracking whiskey, and still very, very reasonably priced as well. All the standard spring banks are 46%. Of course, being spring bank, it's not coloured, there's no chill filtration going on, and it's always got a nice age statement right up in front as well. And they've all kind of got that underlying, what we like to call a spring bank funk going on, that kind of ties the family of spring bank whiskies together. Just one of the most traditionally produced whiskies you can get your hands on, if you can get your hands on it. We still struggle a lot of time in the UK, but this is very, very widely available. Good value for money, fantastic whiskey. Always have a spring bank on hand. It's cracking, cracking stuff. This is nine out of 10, and I hope to replace this soon. And finally, this is the last in the trilogy of Springbank brands. This is Long Row, which is their peated expression. Springbank is peated as well, but it's kind of less peated than this. This is their heavily peated expression. This, however, is Long Row Red. Now that's Long Row that's been finished or matured in red wine casks. And there's been a few different expressions over the years. There's been Shiraz, there's been a Cabernet Franc. This is the 11 year old Cabernet Franc. And the one that I really love, the one that I would say that was even a nudge better than this was Malbec, a 13 year old Malbec. And that was the whiskey that taught me that wine and red wine casks can go fantastically well with whiskey. I'd never really gotten to enjoy it before I tried that Malbec. This 11 year old Cab Frank was fantastic and I think I would love to have one of these back in the cabinet as soon as possible. But in the UK, these are difficult to get a hold of. This was a nine out of 10 whiskey and I recommend that you seek it out.
Nonny statement, Dalmore. This is a Portwood Reserve. I didn't have all of this. This was a friend of mine's bottle, Roberto. He gave it to me when there was probably a bit less than a third in it. And I tried to like it and I tried to get on with it. And it was a wee bit better. There was at least a flavour or two in there that you could pick out that a wee bit of character, but it was still sickly. It was still odd. It was still strange. I actually struggled to finish this off. It wasn't wasted and it's not awful. And I'm sure there's lots of people out there that could enjoy this. I think that this would struggle up against any kind of port wood or port matured whiskey out there at all. If you just tasted this in contrast with anything, the oddness and the blandness would be obvious here. I wouldn't recommend this whiskey. This gets a 6 out of 10, perhaps even less than that, honestly. I really struggled with it and it's just... This is not a whiskey designed for me. It's not a whiskey that I would seek out and it's not one that I would easily recommend to anyone, ever, honestly. I will stay on the lookout for a decent Dalmore, but it'll always be a try before I buy. <laughs> Glenlivet, 12 year old. This is the 12 year old before they replaced it with the Finder's Reserve. So there's a newer version out that the bottle looks exactly the same, but the box that it comes in has been upgraded quite a bit. But this is a bottle from perhaps 2014. This is one of the three Glens, as I like to call them, Glenfiddich, Glenmorangie, and Glenlivet. You know, they're kind of light, solid whiskies that are made in such vast quantities that it seems to be very consistent and very good. They're very good at keeping them consistent as well. Okay, they're at 40%, you know, they're going to be chill filtered, they're going to have colour added to keep that consistency and all of these things. But it's nice to have that kind of solid anchor there as well. And these are the perfect whiskies to start off a flight and get your palate in the right zone. I probably will look out for this coming on offer because I always like to have a Glenfiddich, a Glenmorangie or a Glenlivet in the cabinet at any point in time. This is still decent whisky, 7.5 out of 10, and you shouldn't turn your nose up at either. Now this is a bottle that I'm going to be sad to part with. This wasn't fantastic whisky, but it was very, very good whisky, very clean and very classy for its age. This was a 26 year old Brora. I came about this in a bizarre way. I actually found this in a bar and I bought what was left of the bottle to share with friends at a specific event, but I ended up bringing a lot of it home as well and I got to know it over time. This was a 1982 Brora, so the peated levels had dropped significantly. Very hard to detect any smoke or peat in this at all. I would say you would have to smell an empty glass to pick up any smoke or peat from this whiskey. So it's not kind of the, the zenith or the, the pinnacle of the Broras from the early to mid 70s. This is a much lighter prospect but it was still fantastic stuff. Very, very reminiscent of a Klein Leash. I don't know when I'm ever going to be able to have another bottle of Brora in the cabinet. Probably never because I think it's a four-figure joining fee to buy a bottle of this stuff now. But a bit like the Little Mill, this was an opportunity for me to enjoy some history and I managed to share this with a lot of appreciative people. Fantastic stuff. I hope you all get the opportunity to sip at the altar of Brora at some point in your whiskey journeys. This one, Eight and a half out of ten. Tam the Villain, another White Mackay product, so from the same stable as Jura, as Dalmore, Fetter Cairn, you get the idea. But this one, I actually think it took a bit of flack when it didn't deserve it. This was always very, very low cost. This was £20, £22 in the UK for a single malt whiskey, and it wasn't that bad. It was nice and sweet and accessible, and it was tasty enough, and it probably got a lot of people into single malt whiskey. I, took, I had this bottle a long time, and I did struggle to get through it. I didn't love the whiskey, but it was fair enough. And and given the price, I would score this at a 7 out of 10 and say, you know what, if you pick this up at a decent price, it's not bad whiskey. <sighs> Jura 10 year old. We shared this bottle, we finished it off last night. This wasn't mine, this was a friend of mine, Craig's. He brought it over and we finished it together. And we had a lineup of Juras. We had this alongside the journey and alongside the origin for a burn supper last night. All of them were below average, unfortunately. And I hate to go on and seem like I'm being negative, and I hate to be negative about any whiskey, honestly. But given what Dura is, the location of that distillery, the possibilities that it has, the money that's behind it, they should be able to produce better stuff than this. It's still poor, really still poor. 
this is a six to six and a half out of 10 whiskey at best. If you're sitting at home and enjoying this Dura 10, that is absolutely valid, but you're gonna have fantastic experiences with whiskey going forward. There is lots and lots and lots that is infinitely better than this stuff out there. An on-age statement, Kalila. Now we threw away the 12 year old here already. This was a non-age statement that my wife bought for me a gift. This was back when this was an exclusive, I think for the Friends of the Classic Malts. And I think at one point it was only the whiskey exchange that sold this. So I've had this for a long time. And for the first third to halfway through the bottle, I didn't really enjoy it. But the second half of the bottle was much better. Was that the whiskey? Was that with me? I'll leave that up to you to decide, but it did get better to the point that in a blind lineup when the Whiskey Rev was down here at New Year, this performed very, very well for a lot of people up against a 2009 vintage Culhonan. Quite surprising. The thing is, we don't know what's in this. I don't know what differentiates Moch, which is Gaelic for Dawn apparently, to the standard 12 year old. Clearly they're different as you set them side by side. Has one got a bit less peat maybe, but then you try it on a different night and you think it's the other way around. It was different, it's different enough from the 12 to have a valid existence, but I wish there was a wee bit more information on the bottle to tell us what was in this. Still, decent stuff, eight out of 10. And finally, I'm gonna really, really miss this bottle. This, this is Buna Haven Moina Oloroso. This is the 2017 bottling. Um, Non-age statement, 90 pounds. But I bought this on the recommendation of Phil from Whiskey Wednesday and I'm so, so glad I did. I've since bought another bottle of the Fischiel 2018 Moina Oloroso, which was very, very similar to this. This probably had a wee bit of an edge on it. This was ever so slightly darker and richer than the Fischiel bottling, but they were vo both very, very similar whiskies to me. This is just cracking, cracking stuff. I know this is expensive to buy now. It's very, very difficult to get your hands on. I hope the Buna Haven bring us more of this whiskey because it's wonderful stuff. Nine and a half out of ten. It's appeared in quite a few of my videos. And if you see this, buy it on site. Fabulous whiskey. Now a sample of that Moino Oloroso is available alongside eight other whiskies from this recycled review. And for a chance to win them, all you need to do is to be a subscriber of this channel and write in the comments below, heels please. I'll take everyone's names and draw one lucky winner during a live upcoming VPUB live stream. Then I'll contact you directly through the comments section here. Of course, you need to be of legal age to consume alcohol in your country of residence. And of course, you also need to live in a country where I can legally ship samples to you. See the description below for more details and to find out when the giveaway closes and the date of the live draw. Good luck. In the meantime, I'm going to get to work on another 15 whiskies to bring you in a future recycled review. So, until next time.